Hey guys, it is Brooke from The Junk Parlor and I am going to show you what I picked up yesterday. So we were on our way to Jeff City, Missouri. That's where my in-laws are. And we were meeting up with Matt's sister who is going to be in town and the rest of his family. On the way down, I got a text message talking about somebody needing to get rid of some stuff. I picked off of her before. So I knew her, I knew where she was and it was literally on the way, maybe a half a mile to a mile off of the highway. I convinced hubby to let me stop on the way back home. So we stopped there. I did a quick walk around, grabbed a few things, and then hooked her up with some numbers of some dealers who might want to go pick her as well. Because since we have moved up to Ankeny, I buy a lot less. So if you watch these videos of my hauls and you're thinking that I buy a lot, I'm telling you it's a drop, a drop in the bucket compared to how much inventory I used to go through. But when we were in Centerville, I had a 2,000 square foot building. I did two uh, live Facebook, Instagram sales a week. And I was just really going through a lot of inventory. Now that we are in Ankeny, I have a smaller house. I don't have a 2000 square foot shop. And so I am being a lot pickier on what I buy. I also, for, for no real reason, but I kind of stopped doing my Facebook and Instagram live sales. I do do story sales every Wednesday. So if you are interested in purchasing, you can do that. But I just, we moved and it was very stressful and I changed kind of what my focus was. And so it's kind of like it is what it is. If you had told me that moving would have affected me emotionally as much as it did, I would have been like, whatever. But I, I probably took it the hardest out of the whole family. Um, you know, we were doing it for the right reasons. I still think that it was a good move for everybody else for sure. Um, for me, I'm still kind of um, oh, probably in my adapting phase. Um, somebody has said and pivoting in your business is, is kind of like a uh, grieving and I would I can relate to that I, I do know grieving very well we lost our son when I was nine months pregnant just out of the blue um, cord turned out to be tied in a knot so I'm definitely fresh with a grief um, even though gosh he would be 17 17 years old now so I can honestly say that moving is kind of like grieving. But if you had told me moving was gonna be such a big deal, I would have been like, whatever. So for those of you who haven't moved in a long time or moved your business or moved from your hometown or moved from living across the road from your parents, then you are probably gonna think, Brooke, you're crazy, but I'm telling you it was hard. And I know I'm not the only one. It's just if you haven't moved, you don't have that relation relationship or you, you can't relate to it the same. But I did have a lot of people message and say, and they didn't even have businesses and say, hey, moving is crazy hard. And, you know, you just don't understand if you haven't done it. So for everybody that had moved and I thought, oh, no big deal. Why are you freaking out? Why are you stressing out about that? Mm, now that we've moved, I can totally totally relate. So all that to be said that I picked up a few things, but not too much. If I had been still in Centerville with my brick and mortar and selling like a mad woman, I would have been filling my trailer at least once, maybe twice. I mean, she had some good stuff. So thank you to my family for letting me stop because if you followed me very long, then you know the kids, the hubby, they're not really into this stuff. They really don't like to stop. Even when my husband goes with me, you know, random times and we're not driving from point A to B, he normally sits in the car and scrolls on his phone. So I guess it's good that we have cell phones, right? Let's see what I picked up at her house and then I can be remorseful for the things that I didn't grab. But less space means you gotta be pickier. Have you seen a piece like this before? Because I have not. It's basically a um, doll size miniature. I don't know if it's a salesman sample. I haven't done any research on it, 
but it is like an enamel table, um, almost like a Hoosier cabinet. The doors are hinged and work, and oh my gosh, it is just so, so cute and small, miniature. This biscuit tin would be so much better if some farmer, but you can turn it around to one of the other sides, if some farmer hadn't put on their empty bottles. So this is painted on, I may, and I'm gonna say may, attempt to put just stripper on each thing and see if I can just strip off the top layer of paint or I'm just gonna leave it because like I already mentioned, you could put it side, you could do the back view. I mean, it's exactly the same as the front view. The top I think is pretty worn off, but once it gets cleaned, I'm guessing I might be surprised with how it holds up. I did get a little whisk broom, hand broom. I was, um, when I was in Centerville, I literally found, I don't know, probably close to a hundred of those because I had a girl who had seen maybe in like Country Living Magazine or Flea Market style, they had take, taken the whisk brooms and made a wreath and she wanted to do that. Since then, even though it's been years now, I'm always attracted to whisk and hand brooms. This one even has a plastic sleeve on it, which I've never seen one that has a sleeve. It says Fetzer, or maybe that's a P. Petzer Oil Company. It's Victor, Iowa. So clean that up with some leather cleaner, but the whisk broom itself is really nice, nice color. Oops, well, this is gonna need glued, obviously, because it just fell apart. But I, I missed this on my first pass, so I am glad that I went ahead and did two passes because, hello, you guys know that I collect these little butter presses. This one is maybe, I don't know, flowers, cherries, acorns, I can't tell, um, to be determined. But I did not see that my first pass, so glad I went back around. Then I grabbed two funnels. I'm always looking for funnels to make funnel trees for people. So this one, even though they're pretty much the same size because this one has the long spout, um, it makes that one nest well. So we already have two that would fit together nicely. Ooh, she did have this ironstone pitcher. It does have a chip in it, but hello, who cares? Look at that crackling and crazing. It is amazing. It is unmarked, but I'm telling you the crackling and crazing make up for it. Now, I prefer to get white, all white butter pats, but I did go ahead and get these. We've got some floral patterns, some, a golden band. This one says Hanley, England, and then the other ones are not marked, but these are super cute. And I mean, hello, this is what they're supposed to go with, I think. I also got this little ceiling tin tile. She had a lot of good ceiling tin. A lot of it was the good chippy white, but I just, I don't have my workshop anymore. So it's harder to clean and seal and do all of the things, but the weather is getting nicer. I mean, we had like 60 degrees on Friday. We woke up to snow on Saturday. <laughs> so the weather is all over the place considering this is the beginning of April. Ooh, she had a jar grabber. This one is green. Again, you've been following me. You know that we can take these and this is not really a good match, but you can take these and use them as risers. So, so even though silver plate and this probably don't coordinate the best, this is kind of an example. Then you can put a plant on there. You could put a little collection of something in there. Um, even just putting a candle in here, it makes a great riser. In the house, she had this a green pitcher, and I think she knows that I love green, so she got me this. There are a couple of like, I don't know if you call them pit marks. I think it was just happened in the kiln. I don't really think that it's like happened afterwards. It does have one, two, four on the bottom. It is a great green color. So I do have some green pictures back here. 
Um, very similar, but a different, a lighter color green. Did get a couple of lamp pieces. These are metal with some discolored old paint on them. Got a wooden bowl. This thing is nice and big. You know I've been grabbing wooden bowls when I see them. This one does have a pretty big crack, but I'm not going to use it in any way that I can't handle a crack. A green enamel bowl with lots of rusty crusties. Again, this is a good green to go with my um, green in the house. I also grabbed this little canister. I think it'll clean up pretty well. It's got a green stripe up there and a green stripe down there. And I don't mind the flowers. I kind of like them. Oh, here is another one. So I guess I got three of those. And then I think this maybe was a cigar box. Just looking at the leftover paper, it says something right there, but someone has put little dividers in it. It's a definitely farm fresh. This one is definitely farm fresh. It's a metal with some chippy paint on it. Oh, lots of dirt in there, so don't flip it over. <laughs> um, but I just really liked the shape and it's nice to corral things. Things look less chaotic and more put together when they are sitting on top of something. They kind of have a home base. Grabbed some, what do you even call these? Knobs? Faucet knobs? She had a ton. I barely grabbed any, but I did grab a few. They're good for projects. And then these two are pretty big. So you could even hang these on the wall. This could even be a, a cloche base. And then I also got this pink enamel wash basin. She was thinking she was gonna use it as a sink, like cut out a hole in a dresser and use it as a sink, um, but just never got to that project. We all know how that goes. But because it was pink and just different, I decided, hey, I need to bring that home with me. So if there's anything that you like, whenever I'm sharing my haul, just drop a comment down below. I'll let you know if it's still available. I'll let you know the price and we can go from there. See you next week. Hey, and <laughs> in case you missed my video about embarrassing stories, I'm going to share that here and I'll drop it down in the description because this lady that I stopped with, stopped at her house on the way back from Missouri it was her house. I was picking at her house when I ripped my pants open. And I told her what I did after going to her house and how embarrassed I was and how I wish she had told me I split my pants. And she's like, well, I wasn't looking at your butt. And I'm like, huh, I wish you had been.